Welcome everyone to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight we're going to talk about spring creek flies with Sherry Steele. She'll tell us about the garden drake and the pink tantalizer. And we have a trip, a tip that you're going to really like a lot. Good evening. We're the BT's from Boise, Idaho. I'm going to kind of outline with you just exactly what we'll do tonight. Um, we'll give you the two recipes right away. So if you're going to tie along, you'll have a chance to get things together while we're introducing Sherry and while she's getting started on that first fly. So that, that first one is going to be the garden drake. And if you want to grab your cell phone and do a Fred Dupre recommended way of grabbing a, a copy of it, take a picture of the screen. The pink tantalizer. Sherry Steele. I just, <laughs> hey, yeah, it looks like Sherry. Sisters Oregon fly tire Sherry Steele has been fly fishing and fly tying for 19 years. She is a veteran demonstrator at numerous fly fishing shows throughout the Western States. She has been president of the Oregon Council of Fly Fishers International for 12 years and in her spare time is the chairperson of the Northwest Fly Fishing and Fly Tying Expo in Albany, Oregon. And it's scheduled for March of 2023. Sherry started the Central Oregon Fly Tires Guild. It's an FFI charter club. And she did that in 2009. The club ties all types of freshwater flies with a focus on teaching the sport and donating frame flies to conservation minded nonprofit organizations for fundraisers. Join us in welcoming Sherry Steele to Fly Tying Friday. Sherry, it's all yours. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm not nervous or anything. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Well, <laughs> well uh, thank you, everybody. I see there's 28 people here tonight. That's that's a big deal. <laughs> and uh, I'm I've been very anxious to uh, join Al's group of tires, and the Zoom uh, activity has been quite a deal. And I got to thank Al and Gretchen for helping me. So this fly is uh, it, it came about kind of strangely. Uh, there was a premier chef here in Sisters that owned a uh, restaurant called Jen's Gardens. And he knew that I worked at the Fly Fisher's Place and I was teaching flies and teaching cat, not casting, but any fly tying stuff and ordering stuff. And he said, Sherry, can you, I got this fly off the web. And he handed me this thing and it was really ugly fly. It was just like, he says, but I fished that on the mat and I couldn't keep them off of it. Can you tie me some of those? And I said, yeah, sure. About six months later, <laughs> he stopped me and said, Sherry, are you going to ever tie those flies? Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. The drakes aren't out yet. So one thing led to another and then I finally tied six of them. And I kind of added my own spin to it. And lo and behold, our drakes are really big on Metolius, uh, up to a size eight. This one tonight is, is, is not a size eight. I've got it as a size 12. But these suckers are big and they're fat. And uh, so we have to tie them. So when the fish get on them, I mean, it's like Katie bar the door. So what I'm using tonight is a uh, TMC 2312. And I'll uh, put this up here. I'll go ahead and change my camera so you can see up really close. So this is a TMC and where there's 14. Here we go, 16, 12, here we go. This is, a, it has a little bit of a bend to it and it's basically a hopper hook, but it works really good for this particular dry fly. So I'm also going to put my goggles on. I have another pair of tying uh, glasses that get me up a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. Recording in progress. So I'm just going to put a um, thread base. Simple holding thread up so I can get those wraps. I typically... My style is to use a thread base most of the time because 
I I think my success rate is a little bit better if I uh, if I uh, add a little friction there and st things don't slide around. So what I've done is Al and I were talking about uh, the tail of, the, of uh, this this uh, fly, and he suggested a mix. Clip off very small amount of these guys. So what I've done is I've taken both of these and just put them, put them on top of each other, just like that. And the handle part of this is instead of having them loose, you just grab hold of these guys, hold them like that. And this part right here ends up being your handle. So that means that these fibers for the tail Just put a couple of wraps down there. And if you don't have them the right length, you use this handle because they're not loose fibers anymore. And if you need to make them a little bit shorter on one side or the other, you can just pull on them. Now you haven't really lost. If you have to happen to drop this on your tying bench, then you still have all your fibers. Just pick them up again. And you don't have to start over. Now, if you look at this, this tail, that means that you've got the other side of this guy. You can use it for the next bug. So once you get that tied down, just cut this, and you've got your tail in there. Then because this, is, this fly is ribbed, you want to get that ribbing out of the way and tied down there so you can uh, pull it forward once you get the body done. So I do it like this to kind of hold it down. And then you can either cut this off later or just pull it for a little while, save uh -huh. some material, and then just tie it down. And you put this in the in the this hackle holder. Cut this off. Now I'm going to use just olive dubbing. Now this is super fine. You can see that it's uh, definitely dry fly because we want this thing to float. You just do a cigar type of body. down on that guy, pull it tight, and then make this bug. Now you can, you can make this bug really, really, really fat. And you don't have to worry about uh, overdress, what we call overdressing when a lot of our flies usually have too much material on them all the time. But because this bug is pretty big, you can kind of Give it some oomph. And then, and that, that looks pretty good so far. And um, then I'm going to take this guy and wrap the rib forward. And if, if the rib gets, uh, sometimes this, uh, this floss gets a little too fat. So I just twist it. and then start wrapping. And you just get a rib going there. It doesn't have to be perfect because like I say, this fly is pretty ugly fly. And you think, wow, you know, this isn't gonna win a contest anywhere. And so <laughs> you just, yeah, you know, it's gonna get rid of that. This is, a uh, what I used for the wing. So instead of doing all this really crazy stuff to try to get the wing all perfect and everything, this fly is so ugly. You don't really have to do anything, but I'm gonna just cut this off right here. And I'm gonna cut this end part off too. 
and I'm going to use the same technique. Uh, the further I get along with using the hackle handle, I've decided that I can use it in lots of different places. So this guy, you can take this guy right here and fold it over. Now you still have your handle. I haven't pulled any anything off of there. I'm going to tie it down. Now, if you happen to lose it, you can pick it right back up again because all the fibers are still stuck together. And I'm just going to make part of a wing. Now, here, this is what's most important, that you don't get this part of this wing too tall. Because if you get it really, really tall, then it'll helicopter on you when you start casting it. I'm going to put a couple wrap behind and just split it open. That's all there is to that. Then the grizzly hackle, that's the general color that works really good on this fly. Now what you want to do is move your thread behind this wing by a couple of turns. Because to get it really ugly and fluffy, you need a lot of room back here in order to get the wing going. Then you want to make sure that this wing, once you tie it down, is not too tall. Because if you get it too tall, then, it, then it's going to be not balanced at all. So this looks like about the right size. I'm going to tie that down. Leave a little, little bit of room there for the first wrap. Then I'm going to tie it down in the front. If you look at this, there's a little, I'm, I'm cutting this off so it's not in the hook eye. And there's nothing worse than you get there ready to fish something and uh, you've got material in the hook eye. So then you just wrap it. You put several wraps behind that wing. Is this a fluffy fly? And then just go to the front. And the good news is, because this fly is easy to tie, you can whip them out. Because when that drake season, and somebody says, hey, the drakes are hatching, you have to get your gear together, and you better have these guys already tied. So I just cut that off. I got a few fibers here and there. This is not a classic, it's just an invention <laughs> that happens to work and it's been tested um, by some of the most beautiful rainbows on the secret river. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back, make sure I've got a nice firm head on that. I'm going to go ahead and do a whip finish. I'm going to push these fibers back with this whip finisher. Easier to tie down than that. What'd you say? And there it is. The Garden Drake. Of course, you can put heads in mine on if you want to. Then one last step, because we want this guy to float and we want to have a, a V underneath. So you just turn your vise upside down. I don't know if you can see that or not. And you clip just the very bottom of it. So it sits right on top of the water. And there's your garden rake. This next fly is a lot more difficult. Um, usually in demos, we, we try to 
Hi, this is a little bit too bright right now. I'll just move it out of the way. Um, we try to tie these uh, flies uh, a little bit bigger because it's easier to see during a demo. But because this isn't an easy fly, I'm going to tie it in the size it's supposed to be tied on. So that's the, the uh, I don't know if it's a scary part or not, but I sure hope I did. <laughs> so sure hope I get it done. Anyway, this little fly is the reason why I designed the hackle handle because Nate Bromley is a really good friend of mine and he's been mentoring me now for many years. And uh, he said, Sherry, I don't know, this fly is awful hard to tie. And if you can't, get the gill plates, which are really important. Those gill plates, if you don't get those on there, this, then you can't tie this fly. And I go, oh, well, I can do the gill plates. Well, I couldn't. I had a hardest time getting those, the little tiny, ugh, it was so tiny and it just hardly wasn't there at all. And I go, wait a second, how am I going to do this? And that's where the hackle handle was born, was my struggle in trying to get that doggone uh, gill plate on. And sure enough, I had, I had to figure out a way to do it because my hands weren't going to work. So what I did is I just invented something that would make it work. So I'm going to show you not only the hackle handle, but hopefully... Now this this will uh, will come out really good. I'm going to plug this light back in. This is a real size 16, and I tie these in a size 16 and a size 18. Let me move this just a little bit. And then I use this pink thread. You know, the pink thread you're supposed to have real handy. So the recipe, uh, of course, this right, this this thread is is a Vivas, and it it's a, a it's really really skinny stuff because this is a small fly. I try to use really small thread, so it makes my life a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and change glasses. But you will be glad when you've tied these flies and you get going with them, you will really, really like the results because these rainbows on these spring creeks, they see this thing and oh my gosh, and it doesn't have to be pink. If you log on to Nate's website, uh, you'll see that he ties them in uh, lots of different uh, colors. I'm using teal for the tail. And what's neat about this, I found another used for the hackle handle to put the, the tail on this fly. So I'm just going to separate off the uh, just enough for, to make this small tail. And I'm going to leave the stem on this guy. And I'm going to use that as my handle. And so it's still all still connected. If you drop this on the table again, you don't have to worry about it. One wrap. Now I can move this around any way I want because it's got a, you're not losing the fibers. I have found lots of ways to use this hackle handle when I'm trying to try these other flies and get them uh, going a little bit faster is I can then I can use both sides of this guy. So I wanted the, the uh, tail to be just a little bit long. That, that's plenty long enough. It's, it's such a tiny fly. Got a little bit of hackle there. So I'm going to just tie that down. I go ahead and 
the part of it off. Get it out of my way. And then when you, anytime you have fibers that go on the up rungs over on the other side of the hook, because you're wrapping in that direction, obviously, you can just pull that back because you still got hold of them. Now I'm going to get some uh, pink dubbing. I'm going to move my thread back here. I usually put a wrap just to get that dubbing to hang on there. And then I do the rest of the noodle. And this, because this is a really tiny bug, it starts to bunch up on you. You just put a little twist in there. Now, the other key to the, the uh, gill plates is this edge right here wants to be abrupt. Usually, we'll kind of taper it down a little bit. But in order to get the gill plates to poke out to the sides, you have to put a pretty good size stopping point right there. If you look at that, that's just, I mean, I don't know if you can see that really good or not, but there it stops really short right there. So I'm gonna get rid of this extra dubbing. I don't need it. And here's the fun part. This is the part that doesn't work if you're doing the demo, but <laughs> I'm gonna do it all. Here we go, we're gonna, gonna grab it. So I've used a cape that uh, this guy right here, it's uh, kind of a rust color. And I was using something lighter, but they didn't really show up as quite as well. So I started using a darker feather. And I went ahead and dressed this and took off the fibers that I need. So I've got my ackle handle here going. And it looks like it's when I get down to the very tip of these fibers here, it's really, really light. Well, I wanted something darker. So what I've done is I've doubled up on that guy. I cut this in two. Now I've got two pieces and put them side by side. Now with any fly, if you don't quite have enough fibers there, you can now have your handle and you can double them up. Now you need these little tiny gill plates that have to stick out to the side. So you got your, you just hang on to this baby. I'm gonna do the, the side on this side first. To do this in two steps. Now see how long that is? Now to get that in place, it has to be on the side. So I just picked it and rotated it. Now I'm gonna hang on to the tips and I'm gonna pull on it. And there is the little tiny gill plate. <laughs> you got this giant feather but all you really need is just the tips. Sticks out like that. You tie down on it. A little pinch move. And see how that wants to wrap around there? You just bring it back over on your side. And you see the gill plate sticking up there? I'm gonna pull on them a little bit. And there they are. Now I'm gonna, the other important part of this is because those, um, the CDC feather that's on top has a tendency to get tangled up in those, those little uh, gill plates. So you just put these guys side by side. 
put them, you take two of those feathers and all you're going to do is you're going to cut this off. You're interested in getting these fibers down on the hook, but you, because you're going to cut them off and this is a don't let go. Once you get these just right where you want them, down like that, and you don't let go. You hang on, because you don't want those fibers to get tangled up with your gill plate. Then you come in here and cut that off. And I did get one of them that I didn't quite get cut off. I got lucky. <laughs> so now this is tied down. We're gonna we're gonna only use part of this. So the only reason why I've got this much is it's easier. And you go ahead and start to tie this down. It's easier to wrap it on the thread like that. Pull it down and place it right where you want it to go. This part up here, we're gonna leave, we're gonna cut some of it. We're gonna leave that part right there cut it later, you're going to get rid of this part right here. Slide your finger, your scissors down there and cut it off. Now you've just got this, this is like the emerging bug. Now we'll get the final, one of the final steps here. The gill plates are still in place. That's a key part, especially to the demo. I have some, um, this is a UV2 and it's uh, by Spirit River, which is now hairline. And it has a little bit of a sparkle to it. Um, Nate Brumley has, he hand stacks and does a, a mix and that's on the recipe. But I found this UV2 stuff and it, it came out really, really good for this fly. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of thorax here. I'm gonna pull that wing back and just a little bit out of the way there. Can't be very much because it's such a tiny fly. You see this, this part of the fly is really little. And of course, a size 18, uh, I would recommend that you try doing the 16s first because the 18 is even less and less material. Then when I'm all done with this part, you pull this back, a couple of wraps. Now you wanna go ahead and whip finish this guy. And I'm gonna use the uh, small whip finisher so I can push that back against that, that Z lawn. And I usually put three. Of course, you can use your favorite head cement on there if you're very careful with it. Cut that off. I got a hair here and a hair there. Then this wants to be trap all those bubbles. So you don't want to make this, uh, you don't want to flatten it out or anything. You want it to be fluffy and you just cut it off right there. The good news, you can always cut off more if it's not coming out right. So if you look at this fly, this is where all the, the, the uh, bubbles get trapped. And it's gonna sit with this butt down in the water. And of course the CDC helps it float. And there she blows. And lo and behold, there's the gel plates. Just like you were supposed to. See them sticking out here on the side? That is so hard to get to. If you don't use this handle part, the ankle handle. So there it is. Sure, yeah, it looks totally awesome. Any questions out there? 
And then there's a gray can tantalizer. And same thing, but you just change the colors and it's gray superbine uh, for the abdomen. And then there's a green one. And of course, you got to have brown for the, the uh, mayfly brown. So there's so many different variations. So if you go to Nate's website, you can see those variations on his web. Of course, he's in the business of selling flies. You can also uh, send me your email address and I will email you this chart. And it'll, it'll tell you exactly which one to tie for what color. And then you can also use that same pattern for wherever you are. In other words, if you have any merger that has a certain color, you just tie this bug the same way and just make sure you get the gill plates there. I've got some of this stuff, Antron body wool that we're gonna use in the fly that we'll show tonight. But let me slip right back over here to the, well, I'll just show it to you right here. I want you to notice that this has got, every time it makes a turn around the card, leaves a little notch there. For years, I've struggled with the darn thing. We're working on the article that we're working on today. There's a way to fix it. We didn't have a clue. Let's go back over here. And uh, I think you can probably see that right now. And it's hanging there and it's crooked. If you'll just hold that for a second, sweetheart. When I was doing one of the uh, <laughs> deals in the article, it, was a, it required a, sh a shrink tube gun on one of the things that John Kreff had suggested. And uh, so I, I, I finished that project and I still had this, the shrink tube gun here in the fly tying room. And uh, I decided to I'll just leave it here and go on to the next one. And the next one was from a guy in Spokane, Washington. His name is Robert Newman. And he says to take the kinks out of yarn and Zelon and all that type of stuff, he says, use a, a hair dryer on medium warm. Well, I didn't have a hair dryer handy, but I had this. And he I doesn't could, need a hair dryer. <laughs> you know, everybody like, no, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> we won't say that. It does have a low speed on it. And I want to show you something here. Because no more of this messing around with um, these darn things. That you just hang a hack of pliers on here. Now, I think everybody can probably see that we've got all these little doohickeys, whatever you want to call them, to mess, to mess around with. Let me just turn this on low. And there it is, all nice and straight. No more kinks. And I'm going to use that to tie tonight on the Spring Creek edition that we're going to offer to all of you here. Let me toss this back. You know, that thing's kind of warm sitting here in my lap. Hold on to that for a minute. <laughs> Bring that up over here. Try not to melt the handle. Okay, I'll just put that back over materials. Okay, let's are you ready to go yeah. to the vice? Yeah, let's go to the vice. Okay, uh, first off, I have to take my other glasses and put them on. Why don't you talk about books while I do that? Oh, okay. As you know, we have books. So this is our commercial. Uh, we have all these books. You can get them from btsflyfishing.com. You can email Al and order at albd2 at gmail. Or you can go to Amazon. And on Amazon, you can get either a hard copy or electronic copy. So that's our commercial. Okay. And this oh. is a... <clears throat> also, we oh. have, <laughs> you got me started. Okay, now I'm well, not going to stop. Go, you go right In addition ahead, to yeah. books, we have dubbing wax, dubbing tools, containers, embroidery, whatever. So just go to the website. And here is a little fellow that we're going to tie tonight. This is the actual size that came right, out, came right out of my fly box. And this does not have a name. It's just a Spring Creek fly. We call it the Spring Creek fly. And back in the day when I was guiding for the River's Edge in Bozeman, I worked with two guides there, uh, Dan Lowmiller and Steve Summerhill, and they're the ones that dreamed this up. 
And anyway, uh, what's, subsequently, what's interesting is several years later, those two ended up buying the River's Edge when the, when the owner at that time, Dave Corcoran, decided to retire. But anyhow, if I could have two Spring Creek flies, it would be this guy right here and a small royal wolf. And that's all I need. And this one goes together so easy, you can't believe it. And it's got a couple of good tips in it as well. So let me just take this and set it aside for a moment. I'm going to get a larger hook out so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. And then we'll talk, once I get this larger one tied, we'll talk about how to fish it. All right. Reach over here and get my thread. I suppose we ought to just cover them. Take a look at the materials. We're going to need the dubbing wax and we've got hooks dubbing. We already, hey, we've already seen how to use this stuff. I'll just cut a piece of this nice straight material off right now and put it over at the fly tying area. Because I'll need that here in a minute. <clears throat> and a soft dub, I got that over there and I'll get the thread. Oh, and I'll need my peacock. I'll toss that over there too. Run us back to the white sweetheart. There we go. Now this fly is going to be tied like we do in an awful lot of our own personal flies, it's gonna be tied reversed. And it's, this, is a, this is a guide fly. That son of a gun does not take any time to tie it all. Back in the day when we were tying all the time and we weren't in front of a zoom camera and trying to explain everything, we'd turn these out in about two minutes. They're really, really quite fast. Now, I've just put a, a short thread base on. And I'm going to grab my nice straight Zelon that was that was all crooked like this earlier. I didn't. I left that one there just so you could see what what we got rid of. I'm just totally stunned by that. How easy that thing is to straighten out. But anyway, I'm just going to tie this on, and I'm going to double this back. Turned off the TV. I'm just reading. Uh, this is just a Zoom. Somebody asking uh, a question? This oh, is a Zoom meeting. I thought they were putting something in somebody's ear. Somebody's You're welcome ear. to be in there with me. Okay. Does somebody have a question? Yeah, I'll come in there. It's kind of chilly in here. I just turned on the heat. Let you go over there and find out who's not muted and mute them. Okay, now I'm going to continue wrapping towards the back of the hook. And I'm going to get part way back there. And I'm going to cut, the, cut this to length because I want to trim out some of that. And I want it just to be, you know, about the hook gap as far as length. But I, but I need to get rid of some of this because I want my tail to be slightly less full than what they have right there. I'll just trim that out just like that. Okay, now I'll continue wrapping on into the bend of the hook. And as you'll notice in this scud hook, it's nothing but bend. So technique that I showed Jerry Coviello here a while back, we determine the end of the shank of the hook by taking the thread back until we can bring the thread towards the point of the hook and have an angle of about 30 degrees, give or take. So right there, that's about where we want it. So let me just move back forward. And I'll get my peacock. And I want you to notice on the peacock that we have, I call it the rib side. It's the, the stem side right there. And then you have kind of the, the loopy side. It's got the other side, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I the want front side. the front side. Okay, the front side. <laughs> I am going to have the stem side sticking forward or facing the front of the hook. And I'll just wrap forward and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thorax. And the reason I want that stem forward is so that every turn I'm laying right up next to that stem and covering it up. And you notice also that the peacock kind of lays pretty nice that way. Now I've warned you in, 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 in the past 
that we were going to talk about crisscross wraps and I was going to drive you nuts this year about them. Think of all the different ways you can use them and you're going to see another one right now. We're going to strengthen that peacock while I get ready to tie the rest of the fly by just wrapping back through it. And what I'm doing now is anchoring that peacock in place. And I'll just wrap back a little bit further. I'm going to get my dubbing wax. And let me back up just a little bit. I'm going to put on our dubbing. <clears throat> And we'll just touch the dubbing to the to the thread to kind of get it all. All right. Now I want you to notice that I'm starting to wrap the dubbing right back about in the middle of the body area. That's because I'm going to come forward first with it building up a little bit of bulk at the front end so that when I start back, I'll have a slight cigar shape tending towards the, uh, towards the back of the hook. Now I'm just gonna keep going towards the back of the hook, working my way to the end of the shank there, if you will, or the 30 degree mark, whatever you wanna call it, until I run out of dubbing. And now I'm going to continue forward, making my rib, anchoring that stuff in place. See how those crisscross wraps work, crisscrossing over each other? And I'm gonna stop right there. Now I'll pull this over, tie it off, trim the little stub, Grab my whip finish tool. And we'll trim the thread. And we have a completed no, no name fly for Spring Creeks. <clears throat> if you want to name it something, go right ahead. It sure makes me happy if it has a name, but I haven't bothered to name it. It just catches one heck of a lot of fish. Now, the way you fish the thing. Oops. The way you, the way the way I like to fish it <clears throat> is quarter meter crossed and downstream on kind of a downstream drift. And what's really important, let me go back to the fly for a minute. <clears throat> Zoom in. There we go. This area from the from here back, I'll put fly sink on that. That includes the tail. And then I'll put fly float on the wing case and the stub. And you can imagine then that thing floats in the surface film kind of like this. With this, let's pretend that my scissors is the water level. So that's what's above the water. And this is what's below the water. And you fish it that way. And then you just offer it to the fish in any a number of ways that works best with the current. I find a quartering downstream dead drift to, to a fish works very well on a spring creek. I can tell you this, I did it in England on one of the famous rivers over there that we were invited to fish when we were over there. And Jesus, I found out in nothing but real quick terms, you don't present a dry fly or any kind of fly downstream to a fish. You only <laughs> fish the, the fly upstream. And I said, yes, sir, I won't do that again until I got back to Montana and went back to fishing my own way of doing it. But anyway, you've seen a tip tonight that I think you might have a, a use for in, in your fly tying. And uh, a fly that if I only could have two, it's one of the two for spring creeks. 